when you start to look at your images, okay, this is probably what's going to pop up here is, is this view, okay? And in the bridge, they call this the essentials view. And you can kind of see right up here um, that you have some options for those different views. You can view it as film strip, um, that sort of thing. And, and I'll just take it, this is what film strip looks like this. So you've just got a strip of your cameras here, and then you can click on them and the photographs comes up. Now, uh, I, I don't like that as much myself, but that, that's okay. Um, and one of the reasons why I don't like that is because the metadata doesn't come up here. Um, you can click on metadata view, and then what you see is you see a lot of information. And then over here you see a, um, a tab that says metadata. And look, it tells you what aperture you were on, uh, how, what the shutter speed was, uh, what ISO you were on, tells you how big the file is, um, the resolution, all, all that other uh, sort of stuff. Um, so, but I, what I like to do is I like to take myself, I like to take the essentials view, and I like to modify it a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take my thumbnails and I'll bring them over here so there's a little less of them. And then I'll take the metadata and I'll just drag that over there and you can kind of see how I can move things around and keywords and I can do that. Now the keywords you don't have to worry about. If you had a big library, it's kind of cool I could make keywords for, you know, like wedding photography or family or da da da, you know, or people's names that were in there and then I can do searches based upon the keywords. It's kind of cool that it lets you do that. Um, we're not going to worry about that. More than anything else, we really want to just look at the metadata of these, of these images. <clears throat> now, uh, once you do that and you move everything over, you obviously also notice you get a much bigger preview. And I think this really helps because what we're really doing first is we're evaluating the photographs um, that are the best. And the reason why we do that is there's, there's an efficient way to do uh, editing. You can sit there and you can go through, and I'm going to show you uh, tomorrow or Thursday, um, how to make some basic changes to the photographs. Change the colors a little bit, make them a little brighter, make them a little darker, you know, that sort of thing. And, and we can do that to a degree, obviously. But you don't want to do that for all 90 photographs. You'll, it'll be forever. So you really want to take your top third. So about 30, okay, your top third photographs, and those are the ones you want to make really pretty and, and look at. And then from there you evaluate which one is absolutely the best. But you don't want to, um, to spend all that time on photographs that stink, right? So what we're going to do is we need to evaluate pho the photographs. And the first thing that I like to look at is is it really truly sharp? Now, part of that is getting a nice big preview. The second part of that is this preview may not even show you how sharp that image is. Um, so what these are is these are a series of photographs that I was doing um, where they're, they're, it's abstract, uh, high magnification photographs of wood um, and just something that I was playing with uh, at home. And um, I can make them bigger. But even now, especially with the horizontals, I don't have a ton of room here. So how do I make, how do I really see if this is sharp? Well, notice I have a little magnifying glass here. You see that? See how I've got a little magnifying glass there? Okay. What I can do is I can click, and that magnifying glass is actually going to magnify the image. Now, it may take a second to come in. Did you see how it looked all pixelated there for a second? And then all of a sudden it became sharper? Give it some time. But I can move this around. And then I can really evaluate how sharp my image is. Okay, and really see if it actually is as sharp as I hope that it is. And what you want to do is you want to look for things like cracks, areas of high contrast, or <clears throat> really what your subject or what part of your subject is the most important. So for instance, if you're photographing a person's face, the nose is a touch out of focus, might not be such a big deal. But if the eyes are out of focus, most of the time, that means you don't want to use that photograph, right? Because the eyes are really important. They always are in a photograph of a person's face. Um, if the ears are out of focus a tiny bit, you might not care. 
but if the eyes are out of focus, it might be a big deal. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I think those are, you know, so that's where I would check my focus. I wouldn't check my focus on the ears because if the ears are a little out and it's not that big of a deal, then I wouldn't want to throw away a good photograph just because the ears are a little out of focus. Does that make sense to everybody? You know, so you want to check your images where they, um, <clears throat> where their, you know, that critical area is where you've got that, that place where it really needs to be very sharp. Um, <clears throat> you can get rid of it just by clicking in that left corner, by the way. So right here, you see this, um, see the little left corner here? You can get rid of this. You get the hand, okay? Or you can just click once and it goes away. If you click in here, it does, well, I guess it does. You just gotta click fast. If you click and move at all, it thinks you're trying to drag it around to look at a different spot. Does that make sense? Okay, so, <clears throat> What I want you to do is I want you to rate your photographs. You look at them really closely with this loop, is what we call it, or a magnifier. Make sure that they're sharp. Then you look at them. Are they dark enough? Are they bright enough? Now, let me say something about evaluating the, the exposure. Number one, we can make them a little lighter and, or a little darker. What you're looking for is detail. <clears throat> in other words, remember the photographs that I was doing in class here in front of you? Remember how I blasted out the highlights on that by accident? There was no detail there. And you couldn't see the little lines that we all knew were there because the highlight had been blasted out. I can make it as dark as I want. I can darken it down in the editing software. But guess what? I can't get those lines back because they're literally not there. So detail is a problem. <coughs> if you've got something that's too dark like this, I'm losing detail down here in the shadow areas of, of this. So I, didn't, I wouldn't pick this one. I would pick this one. But then, if I'm not careful, I look down in here, you can see that I might be losing some of my detail here in the highlights. So you want to be very careful about what you, you know, how much contrast you've got in your images and which ones have the actual detail. If the detail is there, then you can choose it as a good photograph, even if it is a touch dark or a touch too bright. <clears throat> if the detail's gone, then the photograph is useless, right? Unless you don't mind that there's not enough detail here. It's good to have bright highlights. I mean, it's good to have bright highlights. You just want to make sure that you've got detail. So this spot kind of bothers me, <clears throat> but up here, that doesn't bother me so much. There's, you're bright, you may be losing a little bit of highlights, but not that much. The other thing that you can do here <coughs> is you can rotate your images. So right up here, there are a few uh, little controls. You can make new folders or whatever. We don't want to do that, but you can rotate. Okay, so if you want to see an image, and then here, that's the final one that I chose, actually. So you can um, just kind of see some of the major changes. And I made some changes. Notice that as soon as I rotate something, look at the thumbnail here. See this little circle here with these little triangles and lines in it, that means I've made a change to it. So you see this image here? If I hit the rotate button, now all of a sudden, that's going to show up in a second maybe. Oh, maybe not. So maybe I have to actually open it in Photoshop and make some changes before that shows up. But when you see that little guy, that means some adjustments have been made to that image. And we'll get to how we make some adjustments like changing the brightness and the contrast and stuff like that in Photoshop. We'll get to that later. What I just want you to do is go, if there's any that need to be rotated, you can rotate them. Take a look at them. And then what I want you to do is I want you to rate them on a scale of one to five. Oh, I meant to say one other thing. The brightness of your monitor can also affect how you view the photographs. You have a brightness control on your keyboard, which is basically F1 and F2 on these keyboards, okay? You want your monitor to be about two-thirds right there, not a full brightness. We did some calibration on these, okay? You basically want it right at about two-thirds. If you have it at full brightness, it's going to be too bright. And you might think that an image is overexposed when it's not. If you have it at less than two-thirds, you might think that your image is underexposed. We actually have a calibrator that has a little suction cup that sucks right onto the glass. And it goes through a whole program and it tells us how to calibrate the colors and how bright to set the monitors. We want it at two-thirds. Anything darker than that, you're not going to get a good, accurate look at your photographs, okay? So that's one important thing. <clears throat> now, once you've got that, you'll notice that some of my images here have a little five-star. 
Okay, some have a four star. If I keep going, you might see some are, uh, you know, there's a four right there. You might see a three or a two. What you can do is you can rate your photographs on a star basis, okay? So what you do is, let's say I, I click on an image and, and I really, uh, I, you know, it's too dark and I don't like it. See that? I don't like it. <clears throat> You'll notice right here, there's a series of little dots. That's your star rating. Oh, I guess you can't click on them. That's annoying. Well, you can do it two, two ways then. Um, in the, uh, I don't even know how to do it without the keystrokes. You just have to hit star, uh, Command 5 for 5 star, Command 4 for 4 star, Command 3 for 3 star, Command 2, you get it. <laughs> okay, so this is underexposed, so I'm going to go Command 1. I don't like it. It's not bad, but it's not good either, so maybe even a star 2, but probably not. Star 1, star 1. I think you can right click on it too. There we go. So you can right click and then you can add the stars that way too. That makes sense, okay? So I can just say, yeah, this one's a star two. Actually, it's a little better than the other one, so I might make it even a star three, but I'm really not planning on using it. Rotate it. And you're just going to go through and you're going to do that and you just kind of got to set them up. Then what happens is, and this is really cool, once you've rated everything, every single image needs to be rated. By the way, don't Choose Reject. When you choose Reject, it disappears from your view. We don't want that. I want to see all the photographs, okay? So don't choose Reject, okay? Because then it hides it. Just choose one star or no stars. Don't do a rating. No rating means really bad. And then what happens is we can go up to the View menu. Once you're all done, and you can say Sort by Rating. And then what happens is, look at that, all my best stuff floats to the top or bottom, depending upon what you've chosen. So here it's um, view, sort, by rating in ascending order. I can choose descending order. And now they're all down at the bottom, all the best ones. Actually, that is ascending order. Descending order puts all the best ones at the top. So that's what I like. I like view, sort. Uh, and turn ascending order off, and now all my best ones are at the top. So now all my five stars are way up there at the top, and now I can look at them and start thinking about, okay, out of these 30, maybe, or 20 best ones, which is my absolute number one photograph that I took in this assignment? You see? So what it really is, it's a process of elimination. You first start with sharpness, then you look at exposure, you rotate them, get them looking the way you know, they should be, then you start to rate them. And then once you've got the ratings done, then I'll show you in the next class how we actually can um, open them up in Photoshop and make some basic changes. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to double click on them. If you double click on an image, it's going to start opening Photoshop. You're not ready for that yet. Now eventually you will be, but for now you're not. Any questions? This will take you at least a day to go through all these, a period, maybe a period and a half. So I'm planning on what's left of today and then all tomorrow to sort through your images. Okay? Unless you didn't shoot as many as I told you to, which is a possibility, right? Okay, that's it. Go ahead and log in.